be glad you weren't at the party. Seeing the behaviour of Mangala Bhatia, I was tempted to give her one tight slap. And then her father-in-law closed everything down. Although, truthfully, I don't see how things could have proceeded. Two people were very badly injured. Four days after the party, Praveen was recounting the story from a rocking chair next to Gulnaz's bed inside Temulji lying in hospital. The exterior was a typical imposing stone Gothic building. However, the interior wards had a fresh feeling with dainty blue and yellow tiled floors and crisp white walls. The room had two beds and two modern iron cots for infants, although Gulnaz's roommate had been discharged with her baby son a week earlier. It was 7.30 in the morning, and Cushy had just fallen asleep in her cot. Parveen thought the baby looked like a beautiful doll, the kind she kept on a shelf to admire but was afraid to touch. In fact, Perveen had tried to hold Cushy during her last visit, and the infant had screamed so loudly that a nurse had grabbed her from Perveen's shaking arms. Cushy had Gulnaz's fair complexion and rosebud mouth, as well as the curly black hair that came from the mystery family. Her exquisiteness was accompanied with what Parveen thought was a chronic, fussy nature. Gulnaz's obstetrician, Dr. Modi, had declared that Cushy's agitation was a temporary condition called colic, nothing to worry about. Mindful of the baby, Parveen continued in a low voice. Thank goodness Dr. Penker was there. But Mangala Bhatia was absolutely no help, yelling at the ayah, as if the accident was her fault. Mangla claims to understand the household's customs better than Uma does. And she has more children than Uma. Yes, including more sons. But shouldn't Uma have more authority as the wife of the eldest son? Praveen winked at Gulnaz, who was just a year older. Ha ha, Gulnaz said. 